Hey, Mike. Hey, here we go. Hey, this is it. I'm excited, man. I think about this. We've had to watch from the sidelines since we were kids. Now we've been called up to the show. It was great. Sure, sure. Sir, General, sir. Hello. Ed Stevens, first year. It's an honor, sir. Stevens? Hey, Mr. Stuckey. Mike Burton used to cut my hair. Is that the way you address your commanding officer, Burton? Uh, no, sir. Sir, I apologize for this hack, and may I also compliment you on the sharpness of your costume right down to your splatter dashes. It's not a costume, son. It's a uniform. Yes, sir. Nonetheless, you got to be really impressed by the way I came up with the word splatter dashes. Splatter dashes. Right now, you boys are on the winning team. Yes, sir. Keep up the crap. I'll put you on a line with those sorry bastards over there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, he's so cool. He's so cool. He's so cool. He's a Stucky. This guy is a Stucky. He's an actual descendant of Jeffrey Next. Stucky. I don't know. He seems kind of creepy, that general act. That's what makes him cool. He's got a thing. He's about something. He's about being creepy. Nah. Hey, Mike Burton, Ed Stevens. Burton and Stevens. Okay, ah, uh, Burton, you're here. Okay. You're on the list. You're on the list. Burton, you are Private Sunderson. Private. Corporal, 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 Corporal. And Stevens, you are Captain Hauser. Captain? Captain? Oh, gosh, Rudy, you hear that, Mike? I'm a captain. You each got a script in your packet. Learn the roles, and please, no improvising. Wow. Did you drop something? Not me, Mike, you. I think the epaulettes may have fallen off your uniform, because see? My uniform, epaulettes. Yours, no epaulettes. Epaulettes, no epaulettes. Epaulettes, no epaulettes. Epaulettes, no epaulettes. Bring it in, Ed. I think you mean rain it in, sir. All right, Mike, let's see what we've been dealt with here. Okay, Captain, Captain, <laughs> Captain Hauser, uh, gained renown, renown, Mike, gained renown by being the battle's first casualty, peppered to death by a British musket ball 11 seconds after <laughs> the fighting began. What? <laughs> Why, Ed? Why do they always take the good ones so soon? <laughs> Riddle's full of holes. 11 seconds. Would my entire life to be part of the reenactment? My guy gets blown through by British musket ball in 11 seconds. Ah, an irony rears its ugly head. Jealousy. <laughs> uh -huh. Jealousy has the ugly head, Mike. Irony, as it turns out, pretty good looking guy. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. What right? Irony's handsome. He's really put on weight. Empathy. You see that? That's why I love her. She has no idea what I'm talking about. Still, she has an answer. <laughs> well, honey, that's my life 24 7. So, how's my little minute man? Can't say I'm entirely thrilled with that label, hon. Well, it's 49 seconds more than I can claim. At least we got a chance to salute the general. That guy hasn't changed at all since he used to come talk in high school, has he? That's something Nancy would remember, Ed. Nancy used to cut history class to go smoke behind the backstop. I oh, did yeah. not! What are, you, what are you talking about? You used to make me buy the cigarettes. Mike, is that what you want Sarah to think of her mother? I'm just saying it happened. Well, Mike, Sarah's an impressionable age, especially where her parents are concerned. You know what she asked me last night? No. She wanted to work up that scar on my ankle. That's great. When you got you passed out in the rose bushes at Scott Sykes' birthday. I told her mommy had an accident. Well, there you go. It's covered. Mike, it's not always going to be that easy. What's going to happen when she starts to ask the really hard questions, you know? What do we say then? Is that one of the hard questions? The British are coming! The British are coming! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Ed. Ah, nay, Carol, nay. Not Ed today. Today, I stand before you as Captain Edmund Hauser, Continental Army, 11th Regiment. Of course, I guess Edmund could also mean Ed, right? So when you call me Ed, I guess you were, you were right in a technical sense, but... That's very impressive. Yes, impressive, and also itchy. Hello, now I know why they recommend the long underwear. What do you got there? Oh, I was just going through some uh, boxes. I, I hadn't unpacked yet. It's, it's amazing the stuff you forget you even have. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah, absolutely, Captain. <laughs> okay, you know what? Itch level reaching critical. I gotta get these off before there's permanent damage. Okay, as you were, soldier. Yes, I was. 
because I wasn't quite sure. I mean, you said Shirley Stubbs, and I thought perhaps you were calling Phil's wife Shirley, which seeing as I didn't know he was married would be both a surprise and an uncanny coincidence rolled into one. Of course, Shirley Stubbs could also be Phil's sister, his mother, his father's sister, a sister-in-law as well, I suppose. So you see, the possibilities are really quite numerous, and I didn't want to appear presumptuous by assuming you were talking to me. Yes, I was talking to you, Shirley. What the hell happened to my kitchen? I said, you go ask Ed. Yo, Ed, man! Yo, Ed, man! Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, Eli. Yeah, you, know, you gotta try this pie. This pie's amazing. No, I done had enough of the pie lady's pie. My kitchen's done had enough of the pie lady's pie. Jennifer Young's oven's on the blink, so I said she could use our oven until hers are fixed. Nah, Stucky boys, listen to me, man. You're under the influence of the pie lady's pie. I'll say. You're not capable of having rational thoughts right now. She has got to go. You know what she's saying, Eli? Make pies like this? She's saying. Dude, how am I supposed to run my snack bar looking like that, man? It looked like Hurricane Jennifer done went through there. I was about to call the governor to see if I could have it declared a disaster area. Maybe I'll get some federal funds or something. Find a way you like, because she needs 150 pies for the pie-eating contest this weekend. All right? So play nice. Get along. Excuse me, Ed. Yeah? There's an officer and a gentleman waiting to see you. All right. Yo, Ed, man. Make it work, man. Guess we're going to be working together, huh? That'll be a cold day in hell. Thanks, Shirley. Ah, Mr. Mayor. Oh, uh, General. Mm. Sir, what can I do for you? Evans? Yes, sir. I don't have to tell you how important this weekend's reenactment is. No, sir. The Battle of Meadow Creek is arguably the pivotal battle in our nation's struggle for independence. Stucky Villians have been recreating the general's victory for over a hundred years. Son, there's a troublemaker in town. An Englishman. A real one. And like King George, he's insisting on imposing his tyrannical will on the good citizens of Stuckyville. He's seeking an injunction to stop the reenactment? Mm. Can't let that happen. Besides the thrill of kicking a little red coat butt, the reenactment brings in tourists. Tourists bring money. The city coffers depend on that. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Anyone can file a request seeking an injunction. It's quite another thing for a judge to grant it. Just the same, we'd like you to handle it. Yes, sir. I'd be glad to. Good boy. Thanks. Yep. Oh, by the way, we could use a couple of dozen of these, stack them up like cannonballs. Not a problem, is it? No. What made you think you had to hide them? I don't know. It was an impulse. I heard Ed coming. I panicked. I feel so horrible. We just moved in together and already I'm hiding something from him. No, but they're just old love letters. Everyone's got some of them stashed no, somewhere. Right. Not me. Actually, Mike did write me a letter once. In 11th grade, asking me to homecoming. He's too nervous to ask in person. You know, Mike's stomach. But you went. No, we got the zip code wrong. The letter arrived a week after the dance. Oh, I have to fix this. When I go home, I'm destroying those letters. Oh, come on, Carol. Cut Ed some slack. He knows about Nick. Knows Nick was a writer. He probably figured that... Unless it wasn't Nick. Ooh. This was pre-Nick. No one you've ever heard of. It's impossible, Carol. We know everybody you know. Actually, this was a long time ago when I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, too bad. We're talking about it. Who was it? Did you not hear what I just said? Yeah. That's why I need to know more. I gotta get to class. Carol, you can't do that to us. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Mm. Mike. Listen, I've been doing some thinking about what you say. Oh, uh, Nancy, I don't even think about what I say at the time. And I think I think we need to take a closer look at our lives, honey. Wait, wait, wait. How does that have anything to do with something I said? It doesn't. I was just trying to look for a way to include you. Listen, honey, I made this list today, right? All the things in my life that, that I'm not really proud of, you know? Things I wouldn't want Sarah to know about, like, um... Trying pot in college. Sex before we got married. Kind of history to go smoke behind the backstop. You're gonna put that on there? Yeah, it's <laughs> on there. Okay. Now, you're gonna make a list, too. Oh, come on, that's why. So then we can make some adjustments. You want to rewrite our lives? Sarah's going to ask about this, Mike, someday, and I think that it's important that we get our story straight now. Oh, this is crazy. Is it, Mike? Is it crazy to want our daughter to look up to us? I mean, is it crazy to want to be role models to our little girl? Is that what you're asking me, Mike? No. You're being lied to, do you hear me? You're being cheated out of the glory that's rightfully yours. And it's time you do something. It's time to be heard. It's time to stop the reenactment. Excuse me. Hey. Alan Sutherland. Well, you here to join the cause, mate? Not exactly. No. I'm Ed Stevens. I'm a lawyer representing the town in the battle reenactment. So, got themselves a lawyer now. Yeah, but I have to tell you, Mr. Sutherland, 
I don't think they need one. I've seen your request, and I don't think a judge will ever entertain it. And yet you're here. Out of curiosity. Because what I can't figure out is why someone would come all the way to Stuckville to stop the town from enjoying what's been a long-standing and long-treasured tradition. Because, dear fellow, as a Brit, I find your long-standing tradition offensive. It promotes hostility and insensitivity toward my people. You're joking. Well, trust me. I don't find Brit bashing something to joke about, and that's all we have here. Publicly funded, government-sanctioned Brit bashing. We're merely recounting history. Yeah, more like rewriting it, I'd say. It's an abomination. In what sense? Well, in the most basic sense. The wrong side wins. OK, now you're joking, right? Just some of that dry British wit, that John Cleese, Faulty Towers kind of Roxanne Dalt, professor of history. You should have a chat with the professor. Any guess another Brit? Oh, no, in fact, um, she's one of yours. Another beer? Oh, no, thanks. I don't want anything else to add to my list. Well, this. Oh, Nancy wants me to write down all the bad things I've done in my life, and she's going to rewrite them so that Sarah doesn't think her dad's a degenerate. <laughs> That's good. Kind of like a greatest hits list in reverse. I like it. No, I'm telling you, Ed, a man shouldn't be forced to examine his life like this. It's not right. An unexamined life is a life not worth living. Plato said that. Yeah, well, Plato evidently never beer bonged four Zimas and tried to eat a lampshade. <laughs> Got this thing with care on the letters. This isn't the only thing Nancy's obsessed with. What? Excuse me? What thing with care on the letters? Care on the letters? Is that what you thought I said? Care on the letters? Seriously? Yeah, care on the letters? That's hilarious. You didn't say care on the letters? Nope. What'd you say you didn't say care on the letters? Care on the letters. What thing with care on the letters then? Well, I guess Carol's got the stack of old love letters. Yeah, from Nick. That's hardly news. Oh, another stack. Some guy none of us know about. What? Yeah, apparently she's kind of kind of touchy about it. Sorry, buddy. Hey, what you doing? Crossword. I need a river in Germany. Seventeen letters. Seventeen letters? I don't know. I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know if it's seventeen. It might be more than seventeen. I was just guessing. Is it more than seventeen letters? Here's what I might do. Start wearing my Letterman jacket. You know, what, do you, what do you think about that? Ed. I got one. When I was a kid, my sister was ten years old. She wanted a horse, but my dad wouldn't let her. That one's a little bit of a reach. But you know, in a way, that's why I kind of like it. So you found out about the letters? Mm. I did. How? Well, because Mike and Nancy don't hide things from one another. I'm sorry, Ed. What? No harm, no foul. Grab a seat. Or as we say in the hoops game, grab some pine. So what's the deal? Who, who is this guy? What's his name? Um, well, actually, it's like, it's a chapter in my life I don't particularly want to relive. Oh, oh. Is someone serious? At the time, yeah, very, very serious. Very, very serious. Very serious. But it has absolutely nothing to do with our relationship now. Well, no, except now we're kind of keeping secrets from one another. No, Ed, look, I, I don't want to keep secrets, really, and this must be very hard for you, I'm sorry, but I need you to respect my privacy on this. Can you do that for me, please? Of course I can. Respect your privacy? Absolutely, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. So, Mike, to you, you were right. The mystery letter guy, he's real. So what did you find out about him? Who is he? I don't know. She won't tell me. I wish I had some idea, I tell you, because every time I picture this guy in my head, he's taking on a new superpower. Women are entitled to the secrets, buddy. Women are entitled to the secrets? Does Nancy have secrets? Oh, I read my wife like a book, a little. A lot of big words I don't really understand and never bother to look up. Well, my advice, leave it alone. You know what? You're right. You're right. Cause it doesn't matter who this guy is, you know? It's ancient history, right? It's, it's in the past. I'm just going to put it all behind me. Does that sound convincing at all? Sure. Oh, you, uh, you wanted to see me, sir? Relax, Ed. Let's pretend we're not soldiers for the moment. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, I, I can do that. <laughs> have you, uh, have you ever been in here before? What? No. Uh, I mean, I get my hair cut over on, uh, Rally, but, oh, this is cool. It's, I guess it's, like, what, part barbershop and, uh, part museum? Huh. I eat, sleep, and breathe Jeffrey Stuckey and all he created. Hmm. My wife used to say, people come in for a shave, they leave with an education. She also used to say if I didn't cut somebody's ear off, I'd talk it off. 
little uh, barber humor, maybe. Well, that's good. I like it. Hmm. Well, I don't want you to miss my prized possession. This is a letter of appreciation to Jeffrey Stuckey from Washington. George, George Washington? Yeah. Our George Washington? Father of our country? Cherry tree guy? Well, as a history buff, I have to tell you, there was no cherry tree. That was just a parable. Oh, that's too bad. I uh, like that story. I also like the one about old honest Dave walking a mile to return a penny. <laughs> You're killing me here. Ed, I understand that for most folks, the reenactment is, uh, is like another festival. It's just a, another reason to get outside, to let loose a little. But for me, for me, it's the one week of the year where I get to be the general. People want their picture with me. I get to teach in the schools. Fact is, it's the one week in the year where I feel like somebody. Well, General, I wouldn't say that. I mean, no, it's true, Ed. It was for my father and his father, too. But that's OK. The one week is worth it. So what happens next? Well, Sutherland's going to get a shot in court to argue before a judge to try and justify stopping the reenactment. But I'm going to be there to argue against him every step of the way, if it even comes to that. Well, I got nothing to worry about then. Right. Yo, I'm sorry. What are you doing? What? I mean, what are you doing? You look like a little child in the swimming pool just flailing and splashing water. She have a point? Yeah, you want to make them one at a time? Yes. Wait, you got to do 150 pies. You're going to bake them one at a time. Again, do you have a point? Girl, you got to speed this up. You got to turn this into a little pie making factory. Cross, 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 fill, 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 crimp, crimp, crimp. Come on, you got to double your speed. It's number one, I'm not crimping, I'm scalloping. Number two, it's quality over quickness. And number three, what about efficiency over inefficiency? Number four, how about you mind your own business? All right, I guess you don't need old Eli's help. No. Go ahead, fail on your own. Clock is ticking. Oh, are you still talking? Tick, tock, tick, tock. Cal. Cal. Carol. I the line, Ed. I didn't cross the line, all right? I didn't open a single envelope. I didn't read a single letter. What does it matter? You crossed the line. I didn't cross the line. I may have approached the line. I may have towed the line. I may have chalked this on my shoe for brushing up against the line. But the line, I did not cross. What's his name? Dylan Clark. What kind of name is that? I hate to tell you, Ed, but that's a cool guy name. At least that's what we call it on this side of the line. But you clearly are no longer on this side of the line. Ah, Mike, the thing was just staring me in the face. What was I supposed to do? The postmark was staring right at you, wasn't it? March 91. College years. Yeah, it explains why none of us knew him. Turns out he still lives down there in Buckford. You looked him up, Ed? That's stupid. I know it's stupid. I couldn't help myself, Mike. <sighs> Turns out he's married, he's got two kids, he owns a nursery and drives an F-150. I may have crossed the line. And you can't even see the line from where you're standing. You're gonna get out the passport territory. In fact, you better hope they have pictures on the menu because they don't speak the same language that far over the line. I think he may have crossed the line with this whole cross the line. Huh? Yeah, well, that just crossed the line. How? This did. Amazing, isn't it? A couple of newlyweds decide to renovate an old farmhouse and we suddenly have a new perspective on American history. Ah, these are only some of the journal pages discovered. The others are still being restored. What do you mean when you say a new perspective? Well, thanks to the journal, there's been a shift in thinking for many war historians. A shift? What kind of shift? History can't shift. Well, no, the actual events of history are, of course, static. It's our understanding of the events that's subject to change. Thus, the shift. Oh, and there's that shift again. Basically, what you're telling me, though, is that you historians change your minds. We really do prefer to call it a shift. Okay. 
But according to the shift, Jeffrey Stuckey actually lost the Battle of Meadow Creek? Certainly not. Oh, good. According to the journals, there was no Battle of Meadow Creek. I'm sorry? Stuckey raised the white flag before it began. He surrendered without a fight? That's our interpretation. General Stuckey, a coward? That's a lot of hooey. I'm sorry, sir, but the fact is, journals exist. Son of a bitch. Who yeah. else knows about this? Not a lot of people right now, but Sutherland, Sutherland's going to make it public, and that's going to kill us. A gag order, Stevens. That's what we need. Get in there. Do some of your lawyering. <laughs> some lawyering. Well, I wish it were that easy, sir, but it's not. Stuckeyville. Ed. Yeah. You get the connection. Yeah. What's going to happen if it comes out that the, the, the general was a coward? Hell, we couldn't even be Stuckeyville anymore. Well, yeah. You ever stop and think how absurd Stucky Bowl would sound if it was in a town with another name? Well, it wouldn't be. Anyway, you make a good point. You know, the truth is, though, sir, I've been over this as a fine tooth comb. I've been, you know, I've taken a look at every legal angle imaginable, and the truth is, there's just no way to keep a lid on this thing right now. General Stuckey surrender. The, the bureaucrat in me is already calculating the cost, the impact on tourism, the expense of renaming the town from new signs right on down to letterhead. Yeah, and that's just the money. Exactly. But it's the people I'm worried about, eh? After all, that's all Stuckeyville is, is people. Right. Every year they look forward to this reenactment. And they take pride in being part of Stuckeyville. I know, sir, you're right. And I, believe me, I don't want to see them hurting us any more than you do. And do something about it, Ed. Don't worry, sir. Ed Stevens has not yet begun to fight. Something I can help you with. Hey, Dylan. Oh, Dylan, there you are. I mean, I know your name's Dylan because of the name badge tag that you have no. there. No, I was just leaving. Sure thing. Actually, you know what, Dylan? Um, I might actually do some planting up on my house in Stuckeyville. All right, what kind of plants are you after? Trees or shrubs? Or? Shrubs, shrubs mostly. I plant shrubs up in Stuckeyville. So, so I'm looking for the kind of shrubs that do well in Stuckeyville. Follow me. Okay. Just about any of these in here would work well for you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got a few of them, don't you? <laughs> green. <laughs> green. It's very green here. Yeah. Here. These shrubs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I usually get my shrubs from Shrub City, but this is... These, these are good shrubs. Yeah. These are shrubs that do great in Stuckeyville. Listen, let me ask you something. Do you guys deliver? Because, you know, I'm up there in... Um, in Stuckeyville. Stuckeyville. Like I, I mentioned, know. Right. Yeah. You know anyone from there? Do I know anyone from there? Weird question? Strange question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what the thing is? We have a saying in Stuckeyville. It's a motto. Actually, more a motto than a saying. But it goes like this. Everyone knows someone in Stuckeyville. That's our motto, or our saying. Yeah, so do you? Guess I used to know someone from there. There you go. What's her name? His name. What's his or her name? Uh, Carol Vesey. Carol Vesey. Well, I'll be a... Uh, that's great. Carol Vesey. I know Carol Vesey. Yeah? Yeah. We went to college together a lot of years ago. What's she doing now, anyway? Who? Carol. She teaches. I mean, I think she teaches. I don't know. I don't have a lot invested in it. I should really call her. You're gonna call, you're gonna call her? Just to catch up, you know? Yeah, well, you should call her when she gets back to the United States in three or four months or longer, you know, business travel. I thought you said she teaches. I did. She does. She teaches whitewater rivering, rafting, river rafting, you know, up in Costa Rica. Or as Carol says, down in Costa Rica. <laughs> what I'll do is this. I'll, uh, I'll take your card, and, uh, you know, if she shows back up in Stuckey, well, maybe I'll have her call you or something. All right. Sounds good. Okay. There you go. Sure. Dylan Clark. <laughs> that sure is you. <laughs> Thanks. So, for a time there on the 17th, it looked like all hope was lost. Stuckey's men had been driven back to Waterson Bridge. The British were closing in front and rear, and the nearest reinforcements were more than 10 miles away. So, question, fire away, soldier. I heard the whole Stuckey story is a hoax. <laughs> a hoax. Son, the very land that we stand on was given to General Stuckey because of his heroics. Well, what more proof do you need? Uh, I heard that too. That Stucky wouldn't fight? Yeah, he wussed out. <laughs> Ethan. Hey, it's what I heard. I, I assure you, 
Nothing could be further from the truth. Jeffrey Stuckey was a true American hero. True American wuss. <laughs> That's enough. Mr. Stuckey is an expert in Stuckeyville history. We are very lucky to have him here, so let's be quiet and hear what the expert has to say. I'm so sorry. Please continue, General. Hey, Shirley! Let me see that tally. Where we at there, my girl? 42 minutes until it becomes statistically impossible for Miss Young to meet her pie deadline. Oh, I can't watch. It's too painful to watch. It's like gawking at a train wreck. You are really not helping, Eli. Oh, I'm not helping? Oh, I wonder why am I not helping? Uh, Shirley, read that back to me. Jennifer to Eli, how about you mind your own business? Oh, that's why I'm not helping. Miss Jennifer Young, Philip Stubbs, executive managing uh, manager. We've never formally met, big fan. Who are you? I just got off the phone with Mayor Mulligan. Family friend, kids prep together attack, family's vacation on the cape. The list goes on. Anyway, apparently there's a slight problem with the piding contest. He needs to see you uh, down at City Hall. Well, right now? Is there any other time with the mayor? Well, I can't right now. I'm way behind already. Oh, damn it. Go ahead, girl. Might as well just go ahead on down there. You're never going to make the deadline. Who knows? You might get lucky. He might just cancel the whole contest. He did say it was urgent. Bye. I'll you big time, baby. General? No general here. He died 200 years ago. Listen, sir, I, I heard what happened at school, and I, isn't it possible that perhaps you're overreacting a little bit? No matter. Had to happen someday. No, but you're taking down the wall? It's a tribute to a coward and, and eight generations of liars. Now, Mr. Stuckey, we don't, we don't know that. We don't? No. Come here, come here. Let me show you something. Hold this. What's this? This is the white flag. What white flag? The very white flag that Jeffrey Stuckey surrendered with on that Pennsylvania farm 230 years ago. You've always known? The Stuckey family's dirty little secret. And tomorrow when Sutherland has his day in court, everyone's gonna know. It's all yours, Ed. The flag, the letter, Medals. Wait, 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 hold on. So where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna change my name, move away, maybe. I simply have no interest in having anything to do with the general. Ever again. Honey, I'm home. Mike? Just a second. What is all this? Like, what are you doing? Well, I realized if we're going to be revising our history, we might as well make the best of it, you know? No, I don't know. Did I leave the camera out there? Uh-huh. Mike, oh my god. <laughs> when are you... Honey, that is you in there, right, Mike? Yeah, that's me, huh? What do you think? Well, I don't know whether to laugh or file for divorce. I thought some photos might add a little credibility to the list. What list? The list of my greatest accomplishments. We always want Sarah to be proud of us, right? Quarterback in high school, Olympic gold medal. Biathlon. First man on the moon, honey, I think that was Neil Armstrong. Nope, that was me, Michael Aloysius Burton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's not your middle name. Honey, this is insane. Well, how's it any different from what you've been doing? I'm simply adjusting my past. Mike, it's different. How? It's... I, I know it's only because you care about Sarah and you want us to be the best parents we can be, but do we really want to lie to her? So you did all of this just to make that point? Women respond best to visuals. Okay. Maybe I went too far. But still, Mike, how do we stay responsible parents if Sarah finds out all the irresponsible stuff we've done? I don't know. You take the picture, Nancy, I gotta go to the bathroom. Fresh blueberry pie. Mm. A dozen of them, four more in the oven. Oh, don't go getting frozen on me now, Jennifer. We got six ready to go and six that need filling. So, so, wait, how many? Sixteen. I got sixteen done while you was going triple your rate of production. You scalloped the crusts? Yes, I did. You use ice water with the flour? Ooh, cold. All right, then, let's keep going. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. You mean keep going the way I was going, right? 
Still use my recipe, and the pies have to measure up to my standards. Yeah, but keep going the way I was going. I said let's keep going. All right, then. Carol? Carol, is that you? Yes, it's me. Who else would it be? Well, I don't know. It didn't, hey, it didn't sound like you. It sounded kind of loud. What, do you got new shoes or something? New shoes? Well, yeah, your feet, don't normally, your feet don't normally sound that loud when you walk. Okay, come on. Look, why don't you just tell me what's wrong and stop stomping around? I got a phone call today from someone who wanted to know if I was interested in whitewater rafting. You, Dylan called you? Dylan called you. Oh, yeah. He was surprised to hear I was back from Costa Rica so soon. Ed, how could you? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm sorry, Carol. The whole thing just kind of snowballed on me. You know, I felt like if I knew his name, if I just knew the guy's name, then I'd be fine. I'd be over it, you know? But then he went and had a cool guy name. A cool guy name? Yeah, a cool guy name. A cool guy name. Dylan, don't tell me you don't think Dylan's a cool guy name. It's a total cool guy name. What are you talking about? What is wrong with you? I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake, but you were so gosh darn mysterious about the whole thing. I just couldn't help myself. Why can't you trust me enough to respect my privacy? Why couldn't you trust me enough to tell me about Dylan? I will. I I will. I will tell you about Dylan. You're right. Why should we keep any secrets from each other? We should just tell each other everything. You know what? You go first. How many women have you slept with? What? Yeah, give me names. Oh, and not just names. I want to know exactly what you did and what it was like. That ought to make a good appetizer. Then we can move right on to the main course. I want to know the 10 lowest points of your life. The 10 worst things you've ever done. The things that you don't want to think about because they make your skin crawl. The things that rack you with guilt to this day, and I want you to tell me all about them. Okay, look, no. I don't know. Dylan Clark was the first guy I ever loved. He was amazing. He was sweet and kind, and after college, we continued to date long distance, and I got my teaching job in Stuckyville. He came to surprise me one night, and did. He surprised me. I was, uh... He found me with Nick. So. If you, uh, really want all the details, be my guest. They're in there. Professor Dole, I had a discussion with the opposing counsel during which Mr. Stevens tried to justify the town's little production by saying they were recounting history. Let me ask you, Stuckyville's version of the Battle of Meadow Creek, would you call it historically accurate? I would not. Yet, for the past 106 years, the people of Stuckyville have been led to believe that General Stuckey trounced the British at Meadow Creek. That was the generally accepted view. However, historians make new discoveries every day, and some recently uncovered journals have shown we may have been wrong. Professor, did General Stuckey win the Battle of Meadow Creek? No. No? Why not? Because there was no Battle of Meadow Creek. General Stuckey raised the white flag. He surrendered outright before a single shot was fired. Order! 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 Mr. Stevens, your witness. Mr. Stevens. Right here, Your Honor. Right here. I would love to know what the intended purpose is of this spectacle. Oh, sorry. Um, no spectacle, Your Honor. I just wanted to submit this flag into evidence. Uh, it was given to me by Arthur Stuckey. It's his belief that this is the very flag that Jeffrey Stuckey used to surrender to the British. 
Well, I realize I'm only the judge, but uh, shouldn't you be trying to discredit Mr. Sutherland's motion rather than support it? Well, I'm not too concerned with Mr. Sutherland, Your Honor. No, right now my main concern is trying to restore the good name of Jeffrey Stuckey. Thank you. Good luck. Proceed. Thank you. Professor Dalt, are you familiar with the concept of a sacrifice fly? Baseball term. I'm afraid I don't follow sports. Let me enlighten you. In a sacrifice fly, the batter, you know, the man of the plate, he lifts a long fly ball, generally the outfield, but it virtually assures that he'll be out. Why do that? Does nothing for the person's batting average, and uh, it certainly isn't going to make him a start. Why be out on purpose? I haven't the foggiest. So that the runners on base can advance. The batter selflessly takes one for the team, the runners advance, thus the term sacrifice George Washington. Wrote a letter to General Jeffrey Stuckey after the war, thanking the general for his courage and his sacrifice. Now, if General Jeffrey Stuckey surrendered as a coward, how do we make sense of this? Professor Dalton, you're an expert on the subject. Can you think of any way that the general's surrender may actually have benefited the colony's cause? Uh, perhaps uh, as a tactical maneuver? Tactical maneuver? Well, we didn't think of that, did we? No, a tactical maneuver. Okay. Um, could you explain, please? It's conceivable a surrender might be staged to lull the British into a false sense of security, thereby causing them to weaken their encampment in Meyerson. I see. But is this at all consistent with your knowledge of the war? Actually, yes. After Stuckey gave in, the British removed three divisions from the county. Washington arrived two days later and easily overran the remaining forces, thus the beginning of his march all the way to Delaware. I see. Thank you. So, General Stuckey's surrender actually helped the cause. I don't know what that says to you, Your Honor, but I'll tell you what it says to me. It says to me that General Stuckey did not surrender as a coward. Rather, it says to me that Jeffrey Stuckey hit a sacrifice fly, taking one for the team. Washington shot him the signal. Jeffrey Stuckey selflessly raised a white flag and surrender, taking one for the team. Literally a case of losing the battle to win the war. And I bet in many ways it was harder for him to surrender than it would have been to fight, given the type of man he was. And what if he had fought that day and won? What then? Well, perhaps he would have led the march on Delaware. Perhaps he would have his face on our dollar bill today. We'll never know, but what we do know is this. Jeffrey Stuckey was not a coward. And Stuckeyville and the people of Stuckeyville have nothing to be ashamed of. Thank you. Oh, hey, Mr. Sutherland. Mr. Sutherland, listen, we ought to talk about a settlement here. Oh, yes, Mr. Stevens, mercifully. Now that you've got me on my knees after that spectacular display in there. Well, thank you. Uh, but You know, you may have saved the general's name, but I made my point. Stucky surrendered. Your reenactment's pure fiction, and that's all the judge is going to care about. Can I buy you a beer? Or, or, or a spot of tea? Listen, I'd like to talk to you because I think I have a way to put an end to all this. You like beer? I just want to thank you again. It looks like White Flag Day is going to be a big success. Yeah, I think it, I think it will. I guess I owe you thanks too, Ed. You kind of pulled me back from the brink there. You sticking around? <laughs> of course. Where would I go? Yeah, that's great, sir. That's great. You belong here. I hope you realize I'm going to need my stuff back, Ed, sooner than later, if you don't mind. Absolutely, sir. I was just holding it for you, General. Come on, come on. We got one spot left. One spot left for the next round. You want to take that seat, Fletch? Do your thing, dog. Eat all you can hear, baby. Oh, 
how you can eat pie. That's what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something about this lady's pie. They so great, they should be the prize. All right, Jennifer, don't get all big-headed now. That's just my sales pitch talking. Your pies ain't that great. My pies are that great. Yeah, maybe so, because I had a part in them. Hey, how would you like a job? Well, wait a minute. Work for you? Jennifer has a sense of humor? <laughs> I was just throwing it out there, Eli. Well, you know what? Come to me when you're ready to talk partners, and maybe I'll think about it. All right, then, what would you say to being partners? I'll think about it. No, this is a limited time offer. Jennifer, you ain't going nowhere. Hey, Captain hey. Nowser lives, ladies and gentlemen. Glad you didn't die yet. Say thanks, Mike. Can I talk to you for a second? Of course. Mm. <gasps> oh. So, what do you think? Didn't read him. You didn't? Why not? Aren't you curious? Don't you want to know the whole story? Yeah, I want to know in a kind of sort of kind of way, but I also know it's none of my business. No? No, we're a couple, but we can have a past. So you're not freaking out about this, that I'm going to do to you what I did to Dylan? No. Are you sure? Because we're nearly the sort of thing you might forget about. Perhaps, but you know what? It was a long time ago. You were just a kid, and I'm much better looking than Dylan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can we put this to bed? I'd love to. You still want to know how many women I slept with? Ed! Oh, come on, you'd be impressed. It's quite a number. You'd be surprised. No. It's in the thousands. Oh! One more than Mike. Oh!